Hi, it's Lorraine here at Float Hot Yoga and um, Pilates in Wangara. Um, I'm going to do a quick beginner's yoga flow. Um, I've done a couple already, so this is probably my third or fourth one, I think. Um, so first of all, we're going to come up into our seated position. Legs are crossed, whatever is comfortable for you. You can use a pillow underneath your bottom if that's more comfortable. We're just going to sit here and just do a little breathing exercise. So we're going to take our hands onto our knees. And we're going to inhale through the nose and we're going to hold at the top and then we're going to exhale and then we're going to hold and then we're going to inhale and hold exhale and hold it's kind of, kind of like if you imagine a square so we're going to inhale for six inhaling through the nose inhaling into the belly for four three two one hold for five four, three, two, one, exhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, exhale, Three, two, one, hold. Five, four, three, two, one, inhale. Four, three, two, one, hold. Four, three, two, one, exhale. Let's just take a little circle of the shoulders here on the backwards. Taking the shoulders nice and high up to the ears, all the way back, down and up. Let's go the other way. Getting those shoulders nicely warmed up. I'm going to do a little toe stretch here. Um, so if it's available to you, try and get your fingers in between your toes. I have very tight toes, um, so it's taken me a while to do this. But you basically just try and get each finger in between your toes if it's available to you. This is something that you can practice when you're watching TV. Um, as you can see, I'm still practicing um, to try and get that space in between the fingers, uh, in between the toes. So we hold on to our toes as we're here. We take a big inhale and we're going to fold gently forward. Keeping those fingers between the toes. We can press the toes a little bit forward. Can't get my finger in that one for some reason. There we go. You can press the, forwards gently, the, the toes gently backwards and forwards, whatever is easy for you. I'm just going to hold here. Take a big inhale and let it out. Folding a little bit further as we do so. Inhale. Exhale. So coming back up, giving a little bit of a wiggle of those toes. I'm going to come up into our five toes. I'm going to come up onto our toes and we're going to sit um, onto our knees and onto our heels and come backwards. Now, you may be here, this may be for you. If you can go a little bit further back, see what's comfortable for you. It's a very strange position that we never really find ourselves into, but it's an excellent stretch in the feet and the toes. If yours don't go all the way under, you can just gently move them and press them where you want them to be, so you can get that nice stretch. I've got really short little toes, so sometimes they come out. So we just sit back on the heels here. It's called fire toes for a reason, and you'll see that reason in a couple of seconds when you start to reach a point where you're like, oh, there's a lot of warmth in my toes. Um, as you start to feel a little bit uncomfortable. So whilst we're here, I'm just going to warm up our wrists. I'm going to take, interlace our fingers. I'm going to make little circles, forwards and backwards, left and right, side to side, just gently warming up the wrists as we do so. Taking one wrist, taking it back, feeling a, a nice stretch through the forearm. Very good for people who do lots of typing. And the next one, 
stretching out the forearm and the wrists. For those toes burning yet, mine is starting to burn in certain areas. I'm going to come forward here. I'm going to take the hands facing in opposite directions. I'm just going to take the, the knees so that they're directly underneath the hips here. Again, we're going to do some uh, wrist warm-ups here. So I'm just going to rock from side to side. We tend to neglect our wrists quite a lot. They become very weak as we get older. Um, also through a lot of repetitive strain using the keyboard, iPhones. Let's take it forward. Let's just rock ourselves forwards and backwards. Building the strength and flexibility. We can do some circles here as well. Going in one direction, let's go in the other direction. I'm going to take our hands slightly closer to us and see if you can point them backwards. And you'd be impressed, you'd be like, oh, my, my hands can go backwards here. Try and spread the fingers as wide as you can. You're going to feel a really big stretch um, in your forearms. If it's available for you, you can try and take the bottom down to the heels. You can stay in fire toe if you like fire toe. Or you can come down onto the flats of your feet. See how far you can go. Try and press the shoulders away so that they're not hunched up by the ears. Feeling a nice stretch on those forearms. It's a beautiful stretch. Really, really nice. So another stretch that's quite nice is to take the hands underneath um, the heels. You can't do this if you've got a ring, if you've got rings on, because um, it hurts. Um, but you can come slightly forwards and just wiggle your knees in the back of your hands. Again, it's not for everyone. I like this because it massages the back of your hands. As we get older, we get a lot of arthritis, stiffness um, in the joints of the hands. This is a really good one to loosen up those joints. That's why yoga is very good for people who've got stiff joints and arthritis. Try and get the fluid moving around the joints specifically. I'm going to come up into our cat cows taking our wrists directly underneath our shoulders, um, knees directly above our hips. And let's just do a couple of pelvic tilts here, warming up the pelvis. We can go left and right, head goes right, hips go right, head goes left, hips go to the left. Do a little, little Beyonce wiggle here. We're gonna come up into a nice stretch with our cat cow. So we're gonna come down first into our angry cat position. So we're scooping the pelvis up and in, abdominals are sucked in, we're pressing the mat away with the heel of the hands, getting a nice dome in the upper shoulders, head lang lip hangs loose, neck hangs loose. So we can come back a little bit here and forward, trying to get the joints mobilized here. Trying to get a bit more in that stretch in the lower back. And let's come into the opposite direction. So first the pelvis goes, ripple ourselves upwards and forwards, drop into the shoulder girdle and letting the belly hang loose as the eye gaze goes directly in front of us, slightly higher. Feeling a nice stretch in the lumbar and compression in the lumbar. Where there's compression, when we open up, it promotes the blood flow. Blood flow promotes healing, lubrication, coming into an angry cat position. Let's take it back into our happy cow. A nice smile here, a little bit of a stretch in the neck as well. So we take our eye gaze forward and our head back. Let's come into our child pose. So you can keep the knees together here if you want to, or you can widen them as wide as the mat. Whatever is available for you. Sometimes if you're big breasted or if you've got a large tummy, um, it's easier to open the legs. Or you can equally take your hands into fists and put your forehead onto the hands. Um, if you want more of a stretch in the lower back, keep the knees together and press up from the fingertips in the mat. Feeling a nice stretch here. Big inhale. And then exhale.
going to come up into our first downward dog. So placing the hands nice and the fingertips nice and wide, curling the toes under as we push ourselves up, we tilt our pelvis up towards the sky up on our toes. Gently press away from the shoulders and the hands as we gently lower the heels to the floor. Take a little walk here. So gently bending each knee at a time, bringing them forward, clicking, clicking everywhere, clicking. Come up high, point that pelvis, the bottom all the way to the ceiling. And let's drop those legs as far as they will go. This is comfortable. We're going to take an inhale here. Pressing those the hands away from us. We're going to take our right leg up towards the sky and down again. We take the left leg up towards the sky, flexing the foot and down again. Right leg's going to go up towards the sky. We're going to bend the knee as close as we can to the chest as we ripple forwards and we look to place the right foot in between the hands. At this point, the left foot, we're going to place slightly at an angle. We'll be looking for an alignment here of the right um, heel with the left one or slightly inwards. Whatever is comfortable for you. We're going to bend into the right limb, knee here and we're going to push ourselves up into our warrior one position. So we want to be looking here to try and get the hips roughly in alignment. So we're bringing the hips all the way forward. So you might need to bring that left leg so it's pointing, the foot's pointing a little bit further forward. Let's just sink into this position here. This is our warrior one position. So we're tucking the pelvis in, biceps are by the ears, eye gaze is forward. Try and not uh, reach out with, the, with the, um, the ribs here. Try and tuck the ribs in. So we're not flaring out and arching through the back. Take a big inhale here. Exhale to warrior two. So the left leg comes out. We're still bending into that front knee. And it's almost as if someone's pulling us in opposite directions. Trying to place most of our um, uh, weight into the back of that side foot. Can we sink a little bit lower here? Feeling a nice opening through the front of the hips as we do so. Big inhalation, exhale, inhale one more time, exhale, windmill the arms down towards either side of the foot, the left foot comes round, right leg comes back down to our downward dog, let's take a big inhale here. Exhale, as we raise the left leg up to the sky, taking a bend, keeping it close to the chest as we fling it forward into our warrior one. So turning that foot, trying to turn the hips that are facing forward, pressing, bending into that left knee as we bring ourselves into our warrior one position. Big inhale. Exhale, open up to our warrior two position. We can widen our stance here if we need to, making sure that the arms are at an even height, stretching out, feeling the energy flowing. Inhale, exhale. Can we get a little bit deeper here? Inhale, exhale. Windmill the hands, reversing that foot coming into our downward dog. Take a big inhalation, exhale. Take our right leg to the sky, bring it in nice and close to the body, flick it between the hands. Let's take that left foot out and we're going to come straight into 
our warrior position, pushing into this leg, our warrior two position, sorry, stretching out. And we'll come the other side, stay where you are, so I can demonstrate into our warrior two position, nice and strong. We're going to come into our side angle. So as we do so, we're going to come forwards. So we're, we're um, hinging at the waist, and it's almost like someone's pulling this forward. But everything else is staying where we are. So we can come forwards and backwards here. So just experiment with that a little bit if this is new to you. As we come out, we're going to come into our triangle pose. So you can either take your knee, um, your elbow to your knee, and take your left hand to the sky and reach and look up towards the sky, making sure that you're pressing into the outer foot of the left foot here, coming down as far as you can. This knee doesn't come any further, so you should still be able to see your toes. And the arm and the fingertips are pointing towards the sky, drawing in the abdominals here, feeling an opening in the hips. If it's available to you, you can come all the way down. So there's a nice long line between the fingertips Almost as if someone's pulling you up and pulling you down and stretching you out from the inside. Let's come up back into our warrior two. And we're going to flick this right foot around to make ourselves into a wide legged triangle. From this position, we did our hinging before. We're going to hinge forward. So the bottom and the hips are going to stay exactly where they are. Arms are out long, and we're going to hitch forward. The bottom is going to come out the back. We're not going forward. Bottom stays and pushes out the back. We've now got a flat back position as we come all the way down into our wide legged forward fold. Now, you can bring the legs in slightly if you need to. Bend the legs. Arms can stay where they are. We can do the same thing. We can take the hands to the knees in variations depending on where you're at. Taking the hands to the floor, keeping the hands to the knees, hands to the ankles, whatever is available to you. If this is you today and you're wide, you can take the hands to the floor. You can sink deeper, placing the um, main the weight on the outside of either foot and feeling a nice stretch the back and the inside of the legs. Let the, hang, the head hang loose. Eventually, your head will touch the floor as you can come out. And we would, in an advanced class, we would be going into headstand from here. But we're oh, far away from that. Whilst we're in this position, again, you can be bent legged wherever you are. We're gonna take the right hand to the left ankle. We're going to get a nice twist here, so we're going to use ourselves to pull ourselves around. As we do so, the left arm is going to come all the way to the ceiling. Our eye gaze comes to the ceiling, trying to keep the legs nice and straight, making sure that the, most of our weight is in our heels, not in our toes. If that's not available to you, you can take your hand here and you can look as far as up as you can. You can work within your limitations. Whatever is easiest for you, wherever you're at, we can maintain a twist. Let's take it to the other side. So taking the left hand to the right ankle, feeling ourselves as we twist around, taking the right arm towards the sky, feeling the twist, a nice stretch on the inner thigh here as well, looking to the sky, taking ourselves back around, we move ourselves to the opposite side and we'll come back into our downward dog. Inhale. And exhale. Take a big, nice bend in the knee. Come into your child pose. Inhale. Exhale. back into our downward dog. Inhale. Exhale. Left leg to the sky. 
bringing it close as possible into the body, flicking it forward into our warrior two, pressing into that left heel. We windmill the arms out to our warrior two. Staying in here for an inhale and an exhale. Hinging our body forward. Remember we can hinge forwards and backwards. The hips stay where they are. We come forward so you can come on to bending the elbow, looking up towards the sky. This is available for you, making sure that the pressure is on the outside of the foot. Taking that twist, bringing it down towards the floor, extending that twist further. Big inhale, exhale. Windmill our arms back into our warrior two. Inhale. Exhale, let's bring that foot forward. Now wide-legged forward fold. I'm going to look forward, hinge forward, keeping that back as flat as we can, keeping the eye gaze forward until we fold from the hips. Head comes down, arms come down, wherever you're at. Remember, you can do whatever is suitable for you. Take a little bit of a wiggle of the head and a nod. Weight is on the outside of the feet. Let's come to the right ankle, taking that twist to the sky. Eye gaze to the sky. Coming back round, walking the hands to the opposite side. Left ankle, coming to the twist, right arm. Fingertips towards the ceiling, feeling a beautiful twist and a stretch at the same time. Nice and slow. We're here, bending the knees. We come all the way back up again. To our warrior two. Inhale. Exhale. So we mill the hands to the floor. Coming back into our downward dog. Inhale. Exhale, down to the knees, child pose. Inhale, exhale. I'm going to come onto our tummies here and come back all the way down. I'm going to take our elbows directly underneath our um, shoulders with our hands nice and flat in front of us and we kind of call this we call this um, the sphinx pose so all we're doing is we're getting a nice stretch and length through the upper and middle thoracic spine so we're trying to keep the head nice and forward we can keep our feet flat on the floor nice and relaxed we should be feeling a nice compression in the lower middle back an opening through the front of the chest. Taking the eye gaze as high as we can. Making sure that we're not dumping into our shoulders here. The shoulders are away from the ears, looking upwards. And let's come down. Arms either side. Take the ear, left ear to the mat. Let the heels hang loose. Big inhale, exhale, take the hands either side again. So I'm going to take the hands either side of the shoulders here, we'll come up into our cobra. So we're going to keep our feet nice and flat on the floor. The elbows are going to come into the side of the body, um, almost like our little wings. Our fingertips are pressed into the mat and they're nice and wide. And so we're going to come up, we're going to come up as far as is comfortable for you. So we're gently pressing the floor away, compressing the lower lumbar as we come up, dropping the shoulders back, dropping the shoulder blades back, elbows into the side. Come as far as is available for you. So you're getting a nice compression in the lower back. 
Try and relax the glutes, relax the back. If you start to feel any pinching, you just stop where you are. Keeping your eye gaze straight forward. It is available to you for your flexibility in your lower back. Straighten the arms. Inhale. Exhale. Coming back again to the mat, just nice and slowly. Taking the right ear to the mat, arms along either side of the body. Inhale. Exhale. Taking the hands either side. Pushing ourselves back into our child pose. So we've gone into spine extension, into spine flexion, very slowly. These movements um, mobilize the spine, um, separate um, each vertebrae, promoting the blood flow, promoting the synovial fluid in the discs and maintaining your spinal health. The yoga is exceptionally good for your spine. If you don't have a mobile, fully working, flexible spine, you're going to struggle with injuries later on in life. <laughs> Let's come round and we're just going to do a nice spinal twist. So we're going to take our right leg long, left leg in towards us, right elbow comes to the outside of the left knee. So we take our twist all the way to the back using the knee against the left leg as leverage to look backwards. So we've done some nice spinal twists today. Spinal twists are great for loosening the muscles surrounding the spine, which get very tight throughout the day from sitting all day long. Taking the right gaze to the back, leveraging with the left elbow and the right knee. As we come all the way back again, let's cross our legs together, hands on our knees, Let's just close our eyes a minute. Just think about the spine again. The spine's had a really nice twist in both directions, the upper, middle and lower spine. It's been nicely ringed out and opened up. We've bent the spine forward, we've bent the spine backwards. It's a normal movement for the spine. We should be doing this every day to promote the blood flow you just imagine your spine that's been twisted and run out like a sponge, forwards, backwards, to one side and to the other. And now as we sit here, a little length in the spine, try and imagine the nice flow of energy and fluid through the spine, promoting healing, promoting mobility, flexibility. Bring the spine back where it should be in its natural alignment. Take the chin to the chest slightly, lengthening the back of the cervic, cervical spine, the back of the neck. Take a big inhale here and exhale. Just imagining that fluid running through the spine from the top of the head all the way down to the coccyx. healthy, happy, mobile, lubricated spine. Just take a moment just to thank yourself for the practice and the time that you've allowed yourself today to connect your mind with your body, listening to your body, exploring the possibilities of your body. Did you take yourself where you thought you'd never be today? Did you enjoy the fire toes or really hate it? Is it something that you think might be good for your toes to do on a daily basis? How are the wrist exercises at the start of the exercise and how do your wrists feel? Do they feel looser? 
feel the blood flowing through them, energized. The spine feel energized today. Just imprint that feeling of how your body feels and how your mind is connected to your body, listening to your body. And try and take that with you for the rest of the day. Just gently opening your eyes, just twinkling your fingers and your toes, remembering that inner peace and that feeling inside. Energised spine, energised wrist, energised toes. Thank you for joining me on the mat today. Well done. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and I hope you'll join me again soon. Namaste.